A Macon County man returns home from the trip of a lifetime. Lafayette's Randy East recently spent three months in India and Africa. As you can probably imagine, he took lots of pictures, and some of his photographs are currently on display at the Macon County Welcome Center. Let's talk about the Macon County Arts Council and, and what uh, question did they, did they have for you recently? What question? They said, Randy, would you like to do a photographic art exhibit here at the Welcome Center? And I, of course, said yes, because I want to share my trip with others. And where did you go? I went to India for a month and I went to Ethiopia, Africa for two months. Why did you decide that you wanted to go to those two places? Uh, had, had you been to either place before? Well, four years ago, I was in India for three months. And uh, so I was invited back. I have friends there. So um, take an invitation. What do you like about the country of India, first of all? I mean, uh, did you, that you liked it so much that you wanted to go back again? Well, one thing that people, not that we don't have nice people here, but me being a foreigner and they being foreign to me, everyone treated me with utmost respect. Uh, Hindu and Muslim was who I was involved with. I lived with a Hindu family. Uh, and, and to Hindu people, you are as a God, just like we as Christians entertain angels unaware. Well, that's how they view visitors. Their guests are as God. And uh, so uh, they were just so, so incredibly nice. And, and due to their culture and, and their religion, they're very good, decent people. What do you see as maybe some of the main differences between their country and our country? Well, as I said, here we're mostly Christian. There was almost exclusively what I met and lived with were Hindu and Muslim. And you know, I met Muslim people, and I'd like to say this, that treated me as their best friend. And I know we often have misunderstanding about people that are different from us, but uh, everybody are the same. They all had birthday parties. They all had sickness and health and good wishes and bad, you know, we're all the same. We really are. And then you also went to Africa, and had you been to that country before? No, I've never been to, well, yeah, I had been to Africa. I went to Egypt. Uh, once. So yes, I have been to Africa. And the reason I went to Africa is because my friend that I visited in India is a lecturer. And then when he and his family went back to Ethiopia, of course, I tagged along. <laughs> <laughs> well, what did you, what were your impressions of Ethiopia after you'd gotten there and been there for a while? Well, now, if anybody wants to go on Facebook and read my blogs, I ask a lot of these questions to people. But, but my impressions of Ethiopia before I went which you think of Ethiopia, what do you think of? I thought of desert, of starving children, of bloated bellies, of flies, you know, just drought. But I was so pleasantly surprised when I got there. It is really one of the most beautiful places I've ever seen. Mountain, 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 mountain. Vast plains, it's, it's just beautiful. And the people there, what kind of, uh, how did they treat you? Everybody treated me good. I was closer to, to a lot of the Indians because, you know, I lived in a small village. Mm -hmm. But in Ethiopia, everyone that I encountered, everyone treated me w with honor and respect. And, and uh, you know, I enjoyed it. Of course, while you were gone on this trip, you took lots of pictures. That's why we're doing the story, basically, is to talk about these pictures and the Arts Council, as we had previously mentioned, had asked you to display them. Uh, why did you want to take so many pictures? Probably a silly question, but, but why so many pictures? Well, Barry only took 50. <laughs> no, I probably took 5,000. Well, I mean, nowadays you can take pictures with a digital camera, and, and you, you don't have to pay for printing every picture. You can print the ones you want. So you would be foolish not to go nine or 10,000 miles away from home and not take a lot of pictures. You know, you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. This section consists of nine photographs. Eight of them were in India and one was in Ethiopia. But I want to tell you a little bit about each one. All these pictures are my favorite, but I'm going to pick you up my most favorite. Uh, up here at the top is the Aravalli Mountains in Cahor, India. And those yellow blooms are mustard growing. Uh, small as a mustard seed, well, they let it grow about four foot high, and then they harvest the seeds to scare crows, to scare away the crows. Um, 
this of course is to a religious worshiper at a temple. This was very interesting. Actually, this was in Ethiopia too. This is called the escarpment, and this is, you may not can tell it from the photo, but it is so high, and the view through there is so vast. Uh, during World War II, the uh, Italians who were in control of Ethiopia would throw Ethiopians off this escarpment to get the people in line. Uh, but it is an awesome, awesome thing. When you look at it, try to see the people and the sheep in the photo. It gives you an idea if you can spot them how high it is. This is the Najjar Temple in Kohor, India. This man is the temple holy man. And when I first approached uh, the temple, he was outside sweeping. His hair was not done up. It was just boing all over his head. And then he... Uh, did it up like that, but I thought he was a very unusual man. All the uh, temple holy men, priest, whatever their title is, all have beards and are all unique. That's why I took so many pictures of them. This is a uh, vegetable stand in Baro, India. All your vegetables, all your fruit you buy are always on stands like that. I thought that was a very colorful picture. Uh, any store you go in, you will not find anything that looks like America in any of these foreign countries. Um, most of the stores are just small tin and wooden sheds, and, and you buy just your basic things there. And as I said, you get all your fruits and vegetables uh, open air like this. It's just a giant farmer's market in the city. Uh, I wanted to mention this. This uh, is a natural pose. This is in that same Najjar uh, temple in uh, Kohor. These are reli Hindu religious symbols. And when I speak about holy men, and, and all, all of them I'm speaking about are, are Hindu people, all except the Taj Mahal, which is a, a Muslim mosque. And in this section, of course, we have six photos. And uh, one, two, two of them are Ethiopian, and the rest are uh, Indian. And I'd like to talk about this. This was made at what you call a bowdy. Uh, a bowdy, uh, when they had kings and queens in, uh, well, I'll say Rajasthan, India, probably all over India. Uh, this is where the queen uh, got her water and bathed. And this is level, built level with the ground, but it goes down maybe seven or eight stories. And it is absolutely awesome to see. Um, just the architecture, the, everything about it, I, I loved it. You know, it, it was almost as inspiring as Taj Mahal was to me. It was really amazing. And I titled that Stairway to Heaven because you walk up a lot of steps going to the top. This is in Kohor, India also. It shows women, and what they're doing is gathering firewood. Every day you see people gathering firewood. And why? Because they come home and cook here in their little uh, kiln oven. Uh, they sit flat on the ground. They got a, well, a little small stoop they sit on. There's the wood behind her. She's patting out what they call chapalti, which is a round bread that you break in two and pick up your little, um, out of your little bowl of vegetables that you eat, you dip down in there. Rarely will you see a spoon or a fork or a knife. I think the only thing I ever saw was a spoon, and rarely did I use a spoon. I'm pretty good with eating uh, with my hands, with, with, with chipotle. Um, but that, that's what it is. They, they gather the wood, then they come home and cook it. This big thing here is water. Um, you, you get all your water dipped out of that. Um, a lot of homes uh, don't have well water. They have to get it from another, someone's well. And in Ethiopia is where everyone, most everyone packs water. It, it was so sad to see a young girl or an old woman carrying these heavy, heavy loads on their backs. It was very sad. But uh, that explains, ladies, don't ever fuss about your kitchen needing remodeling because look here. <laughs> These two photos were made at what you call a bull jump and marriage ceremony. And you may say, what is a bull jump? Well, I too asked what was a bull jump. If you marry in the Hammer Village, then you have to, the, the male has to participate in the bull jump. 
the uh, wife who is chosen by the father, the bride, uh, by the groom's father, uh, she has to give so many cattle to become this boy's wife. And then they line up bulls, and in this case it was ten bulls lined up side by side. A man would be on the back grabbing his tail, and a man would be on the front grabbing his horns. Then the groom, who was naked before God and the entire audience that was watching him, would jump up on the bull's back and run across the back and jump down. He would do that three times, and that's why it's called a bull jump. Now, I didn't include a photo of, uh, of the ladies. Uh, I've got several of shows they're bareback, and uh, they, they're just covered in scars. And some of those scars are bleeding, and you ask, why are they bleeding? It's because the groom-to-be takes a big, long switch, and he hits the women with it. And you say, why does he hit it? It's because these women are begging him. I was right beside of it when it happened. They begged to be whipped by him. It's a sign of love. You know, it's a sign of love. You'll notice the orange hair. Uh, every woman there had the orange dyed henna hair and ha mostly had the same uh, hairdo, I guess, for the bull jump. And this, I think, is my favorite photo, or, or one of my most favorite photos. There are 16 photographs in this section, and it's mixed with uh, India and uh, Ethiopia, Africa. And, and I want to tell you something about a few of them. This photo here is of Lalibela in uh, Ethiopia. Uh, it is a fascinating story. You really need to get the full depth of it to go online and read about it. King Lalibela had a vision uh, of, um, by God to go to Jerusalem. He did. And when he came back, he built a new Jerusalem. He built 11 churches in, in a hillside out of solid rock. This is the top of the hill. It is absolutely amazing, the intricate work, the, the fabulous work that these churches did, and the story behind it, what a man did uh, for his God. And after all those century, centuries, they're still standing. It's amazing. This is a mosque. Uh, I liked it because it shows all the arches, and it's got the light coming through the window. This lady uh, is wearing animal skins. She was getting uh, all dressed up for the bull jump and marriage ceremony, but I included her um, so you could see just the condition of what some people, some people are in. Uh, these two ladies here were in the Musi tribe. Um, I've got two pictures over here. I will really explain to you more about the Musi people, but uh, I think they're pretty elaborate in their dress. Uh, it was very interesting to go there. This is Taj Mahal, or as you uh, Americans call it, Taj Mahal, but Indians refer to it as Taj Mahal. That is one thing in India I so desire to see. It is absolutely beautiful. It's a mosque uh, built and a memorial for a king's wife. This is the Hindu symbol for God. This was on a mountain painted uh, Top of a temple was on the top of a big high mountain, was a beautiful climb going up there. And, and this was painted on the side of that mountain. And it's the, as I said, the Hindu symbol for God. And below here, this is my friend's daughter. Her name is Mushkan. And uh, this was made in the village of Cahor. And uh, I really, really like this picture. It shows her beauty and her innocence. And that's what. Uh, I think I titled it, no, I titled it Innocence and Beauty, but same difference. This was made also in the Hammer Tribe, and the reason I like this photo so much, I caught a little boy as he uh, climbed out the window in his bright orange shoes. I thought made a good photo. This is a typical home here uh, in the uh, Hammer Village. You got your small child with the uh, fence of uh, sticks and the straw hut. This is how they live in straw and stick huts or just uh, only straw huts. Um, makes you be proud of your uh, brick home or vinyl home or whatever you have. Um, down here at the bottom, this is another one of my favorite pictures. This was made also at the Hammer Tribe. Uh, I really thought this was a good picture with all the colors and um, 
you know, it, it was just a, a captured pose that I was able to get, and, and I really like it. I wanted to show this one. Uh, this is in Ethiopia. See the small burra and the, and the loads they carry? This is typical. Even in, in the towns that I were in, you would see men uh, herding these burras with their little loads along, so that's, that's typical. This is a hammer village child here, and uh, I thought it was good. It captured his innocence blowing on his horn. Uh, below that um, are uh, two birds of India that I thought turned out rather well. These two photos are from the Musi uh, tribe. These are tribal women, and the title are these are Behold My Beauty, and you say, where is the beauty? Well, to these people, uh, a lot in Africa and even Brazil, not as much now as it used to be. They would cut their lips starting when they're young. That, that's her bottom lip. And why do they cut their lip and stretch them? It's so they can hold the di these discs. This is the same woman before and after. Behold my beauty. Just as the other women had scarred backs, bleeding scarred backs, that was their beauty. These lips are their beauty. They also do their ears. See these loops in their ears? Ears and their lips. What's your hope that uh, when people come to the Welcome Center here in Lafayette and look at your photographs, what is your hope that, uh, that they take away from it? Well, I, I hope they look at them and don't just see a picture that they may think is a pretty picture. Some of these pictures, to me, tell a little bit of a story, um, like the swastika. You know, some people may see that without reading the caption and think, why did he do that? You know, that's Hitler. Why did he do that? But finally, after so many years of seeing the swastika and thinking of Hitler, now when I look at that, I know that it represents um, peace, happiness, goodwill, good fortune. And for over 14,000 years in India alone, it's been that symbol. And every culture in the world uses a swastika. So I hope they look at that and, and it can replace that image of hate and evil that Hitler left with a, a new message. You know, I really hope that. Um, I t try to tell stories in my pictures or any words I write. You know, sometimes I, I have hidden meanings that if you're a deep thinker or reader or observer, you might find. And, and I hope that they look at it and appreciate where they live today, but also have an appreciation for someone who has a different, different culture. Um, it, it's not worse than ours, it's just different. East says he's extremely honored the Macon County Arts Council asked him to display his photographs. The Randy East Photography Exhibit will be displayed at the Macon County Welcome Center through March. The address is 685 Highway 52 Bypass West in Lafayette. Reporting in Macon County, Barry Hyatt, NCTV.